Good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of the Stella Luna podcast. My name is Jackson. I am your host. I am also the diary behind Stella Luna Fiber Co. Uh, this is episode 30. How exciting. It's only taken me five years to get here. Uh, to kind of kick off this episode, uh, first and foremost, I want to say uh, Into the Highlands collection is live over on my website. I will have my link tree down below and within all of that at the top of my link tree is the website. Um, so go check that out if you're interested. Um, I talked about that at the end of last episode. Um, but yeah, they are some beautiful Outlander inspired colorways. Very fun. I am obsessed with all of them. Uh, so go check that out. Also, um, I am planning on doing a giveaway this episode, so stay tuned to the end if you wish to participate. Um, so to dive right on into finished objects, I have one finished object this week. And I wanted to get this week's episode filmed so I could mail these out. But I did finish my dad's Christmas socks from this past year. Very exciting. And I want to mail these out to him. Um, they still need to be washed and blocked before I send them. But this is just some little vanilla shorty socks that I have knit out of my yarn. So this is Stella Luna Fiber Co. This is the Mermaid Tails colorway. This is from my Beach Road collection from a few years ago. Um, I absolutely love this. It knit up beautifully. And both of the socks are done and they just need to be washed and blocked. So that's on the to-do list this weekend is to get these washed and blocked so they can get sent out to my dad. I have a couple of other... That was really loud. Um, I have a couple of other socks that I need to just kind of do general washing because they have been worn. Uh, pulled aside so I've got like a little collection of socks to wash but I love how these turned out and I think my dad will really like them <laughs> I've been sending my mom updates about them and she's like I want a pair of socks knit out of these this colorway as well so there might be another pair of socks going to my mom in this colorway at some point but um I did my dad is a men's size 10 I think if I remember correctly um so and he's got skinny ankles kind of like I do so I did 64 stitches for the uh, cast on and I did my typical cut in afterthought heel um I do follow Kirby Werby's well I say I follow I've got it memorized now it's not very hard to do um but I do a cut in afterthought heel for just about every single sock that I do um so we have a finished object, yay! Those are done. And then I talked about this on, I don't know if it was the previous episode or the episode for before, but I do have the first sock done for my brother-in-law's pair of socks. And we are not very far. I was hoping to be farther along on this particular sock than I currently am. Um, I picked up a cold from my husband this past week and I had absolutely zero knitting motivation while I was sick. And then Brandon was home for what Monday and Tuesday doing um, some online kind of certification continuing ed stuff for his work. And I decided to sew <laughs> instead of uh, knit on that day. <coughs> and then the next day I woke up and was ill. So uh, I had cast it on the second sock a couple of days ago, like probably over the weekend, and then just didn't get very far. It's kind of one of those things that I had just started and like, I think I had done maybe like one row and had just started row two. And so last night I picked this back up again, finished the contrast uh, little section on the cuff. And then this morning came upstairs, grabbed my scissors and 
cut the excess off for the contrast and then started the rest of the cup. And now the cup is done and I have got, I've just barely started on what will be the quote unquote leg for these particular shorty socks. Um, I'm doing 10 rows of cuff. Here we go. 10 rows of cuff with about five rows of just straight stockinette before marking for the uh, cut in afterthought heel. So um, hopefully these will fit my brother-in-law nicely. Um, we will see in September uh, if I need to take them back with me and do some sock surgery. Hopefully not, seeing as those socks fit on Brandon's sock walkers and they also technically fit Brandon. I did have, I held the sock up to his foot and Brandon's a size men's 14 and Dustin is like a men's 13. So, um, I'm not going to aggressively block those socks when they're done. Um, I'll probably stick them on my sock walkers just to make the stitches look nice. Uh, but I'm not going to put them on Brandon's because I don't want them to end up oversized unintentionally. So we're making good progress on the gift knitting that's happening at the moment. Uh, let's see what else I did I guess we'll continue on in the in the sock department um, I did pick these up the other day just because all of my knitting was downstairs and I was watching a podcast up um, up here in my office we're back in my office by the way um, I rearranged a bunch of things so that way then all of the advent yarn is over in a corner <laughs> so now I can podcast in my office again um but I was up here watching a podcast on my computer and um and I had since I was rearranging my office you know I was looking back through um you know my hibernated whips and things that I had casted on last year and these were accessible and readily available and needed to be worked on anyways these are my birthday sock cast on from last year. So um, this is Wooly Mammoth Fiber Co's natural sock base. This is from a Halloween collection that she did a, or fall slash Halloween collection that she did a couple years ago. And I have decided to slowly work through um, the yarn that I have from that to make myself uh, birthday socks every year. So um, this, tonal that is up here is spiced pumpkin and then the main color which i have to double check on i have not referenced this in a while harvest hues is the main color here and this is um her natural sock base is 50 percent bfl 50 percent chevio and um don't at me if I pronounce that wrong but uh, this is like a hundred percent non super wash fingering weight four ply so um it's super beautiful um, and it's Emma of Wooly Mammoth Fiber Company there we go um, I love her stuff it's just hard to get your hands on because she's in Northern Ireland I think so um, I had <laughs> bought all this yarn I think when I was in college and uh one I absolutely love her uh fall colors that she did when I ordered this and just to kind of just to kind of show y'all I do only have this is my last stain from it and it's one of the one of a kind colors so it's kind of similar a similar color to what I knit my birthday socks in last year but um I figured if I put a couple rows on this that wouldn't be a bad thing because I would like to have these socks done by my birthday in September so that way then I can do another birthday cast on so yeah that is a recently picked back up whip oh I should say um, I decided to do a contrast pop up here. So I think I did probably like 
10 rows of the spiced pumpkin, five rows of the harvest hue before starting on the leg. I will be doing a contrast heel and toe as well with the spiced cup, spiced pumpkin colorway. Um, and I will be doing a cut in afterthought heel. So we're just knitting a tube right now. It'll be very pretty. And yep, so the plan is to cast on another sock in Toy Santa September out of this as my birthday cast on. So yay. But that concludes the sock knitting. Um, I do have a little bit of progress to show on my shawl slash throws. I don't remember exactly where I was last time that I podcasted. So this might be a little bit repetitive just because I did not move my stitch marker. I don't think. Oh, I did. Okay, I did. So there is new stuff to show. So this is my progress keeper for this. This is my a girl's best friend shawl. This is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. I have knit this pattern before. So here is where I was last episode. I was in the middle of this just straight stockinette section. And um, so I finished that up, did our garter ridge here. And I am now ready to add in my grimoire color to do the second section of these teardrop kind of lacy pattern again. And it's a larger section, so it will take me a while to get through. Um, but it's coming out beautifully. I'm really happy with how this looks. Uh, to touch base on colors again, uh, this colorway here is my divination colorway. The dark purple here and up here and here is familiar. And then there we go. Uh, this beautiful kind of denim blue is Grimoire. These colorways are in the shop right now. This is from my Wool and Witch collection last year. I love how they all look together. Goal is to have this done this fall and have a new thing to wear. Um, I wear my A Girl's Best Friend shawl that I've made previously a ton. Um, which let me go grab it real quick. So this is the one I've made previously using six and seven fiber. Um, and I've worn it a ton. So I'm about to start this larger teardrop section um, on the new one. So very exciting. I'm just realizing I left one of my shawls downstairs. So hold on a second. And we're back. Forgot I had this down on the couch from earlier this week. Um, next up in the shawl department, uh, this is my Bennett sister shawl. This is a pattern by Lindsay Fowler. I have also knit this pattern again in the past and it's one I wear a ton. Um, this is my yarn. This is Sassanac. So this is one of the colorways from my most recent collection into the Highlands that just hit the shop today. Um, but this is Sassanac and let's see if we can show it off a little bit. This is on my uh, gold sparkle base and I absolutely love it. So this is where I was last episode. So we've added a good little chunk, like an inch and a half onto this. We are coming really close to being done with section one. I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So we're at 70, I think six uh, stitches right now and I need to get to 90. So we are getting very close to section two. Um, section two will then have a like, like this is all garter right now. Section two will have a triangle that will go up like that as you increase to the middle um, of just straight stockinette. And then when we get to section three, we add in fluff. So um, here you can probably see it a little bit better in the skein. 
if it will quit focusing on my face. Look at all that sparkle. I love the gold sparkle base. Um, and so in the second half of the Bennett Sister Shawl, I will be including my Surrey Cloud Lace Base. This one has some long tie strings on it. Um, anyways, uh, and this is also in Sassanac as well. So all of it is in Sassanac and I'm very excited. Uh, so I love how that's coming along. It's gotten a little bit more knitting time than my a girl's best friend just because I know the uh, teardrop section takes kind of a lot of mental fortitude and this is just garter with an i-cord edge so um, a lot easier to pick up when the brain's not functioning fully and not all cylinders are firing at the same time but that is shawl knitting um, onto, onto my habitation throw. This thing is huge, and so it's not getting a ton of knitting, but a little bit has been added onto this. So I have done a couple of rows. So we are, here we go. Um, we're getting really close to being done with the first color of the second half. Um, this is the color I started my decreases on. Uh, so it's coming along quite nicely. It is very, very, very big now. I don't, it doesn't technically fit on the needles, but we're getting to like almost full wingspan here with how big it is. Um, and I think I said last episode, I am going to probably move this into one of my large baskets that I have. Um, one of the baskets right now has yarn that I need to take to, uh, probably my knit group or something, um, and see if anyone wants it. So I just have it in that basket, but I would like to get the yarn out of that basket and put my habitation throw into that basket. Um, and it's just a, a basket I had gotten at Le Target, so nothing fancy over there, but just a, a big basket to fit a large project in. But that is it for knitting. I do have a little bit of sewing to share this week. Um, and by a little bit, I mean, it's like kind of one project. So to kind of start out, um, I was sewing on Tuesday. I went and cut out fabric for this pattern from Vogue. So this is the Vogue V1821. It's a oversized little dress. There's the little drawing. Um, I'm going to a football game at the end of October with some friends of mine. And um, it's homecoming weekend for Ole Miss. And powder blue is not always an easy outfit to find. And I had a plan of just getting the powder blue jersey and wearing a jersey and some faux leather leggings and boots and that being kind of it. But I also really wanted to sew. I have been itching to sew. Um, I really want to get into garment sewing in particular. Um, and so Tuesday, I started a dress. Um, so this might look like a ton has been done. Like I even did the pockets. We've done a bunch of top stitching. And then um, when it's huge, which I knew it was going to be huge, um, the only issue is that pattern does not tell you how much positive ease you're going to have from your bust measurements. Um, my mom made the suggestion knowing that this thing was going to be really big, uh, that I probably should have taken upper bust measurements and not full bust measurements to determine my size, which will be drastically different and stuff. Um, 
because my full bust measurement is something like 43 inches and I don't even know what my upper bust measurement is but I I'm a I'm a busty gal uh, to say the least and um, figured out like before I went to bed basically I'd done a full day's worth of cutting out all of the pattern pieces and starting to sew everything together that I was doing a quarter inch inseam um, or that was the seam allowance that I was doing so doing a quarter inch when it calls for five eighths of an inch so um I have to seam rip this whole thing um, top stitching and pocket holes and everything um so that's fun so this has been in timeout since tuesday but um i am deciding because pockets are hard and i am new to sewing garments that um, i'm probably gonna not include the pockets second time around um just because one i will probably not be using the pockets anyways uh i will have a little clear stadium bag Oh my god, my nose. I have a clear stadium bag that I'll have anyways, so there's really no point in dealing with the effort that comes with doing the pockets. Plus, um, my fabric's kind of light, and I don't really want like the pockets coming out or really being visible. Uh, so even though the pockets were a ton of work on that project, um, we're just gonna omit it and stuff which is fine. It's just fine. Uh, I'm not too butthurt about it. I am butthurt about having to seam rip all this, the top stitching though. I'm not looking forward to that. Um, but maybe I'll see, uh, Brandon and I are going out to dinner tonight, but maybe tomorrow night or something like that. Maybe see if Brandon wants to watch a movie and I'll just seam rip that project while we watch a movie because I don't have to pay too much attention um, to do that. I just have to remember what pieces are what. But the type of fabric I'm using is like a heavy duty cotton. So it's not exactly quilting cotton. It's kind of up there a little bit more with like a muslin. So um, hopefully it holds up decently well to being seam ripped. And uh, I think it's got enough weight. It's a little bit lighter weight than, than what the pattern calls for, but I think that'll be okay. As you can see, this thing's huge. And it's supposed to be oversized, and I know that. But um, I will probably also be, uh, I'm gonna take my upper bust measurements and I will probably be trimming the pattern pieces down by a bit but um, hopefully that will go by a little bit easier um, and stuff. Cause primarily the only thing that I'm gonna like size down is like the top portion. I'm not gonna worry about the, the skirt because the skirt has to be gathered to begin with. So um, skirt can remain the same size. I don't mind there being more fabric back there anyways, um, but just like size in on the top and stuff and redo the neck piece and I think we should be good we'll see so giveaway time um since it is pumpkin spice season officially I'm having the apple crisp shaken espresso um in order to participate in the giveaway, let me know what your favorite fall beverage is down below in the comments. Um, that's all you have to do to enter. Um, I will announce giveaways next episode. Uh, but this giveaway will be for a skein of Healer. This is an absolutely gorgeous color from my Into the Highlands collection inspired by Outlander. Um, so you can get your hands on this beautiful skein here. Uh, this is on my merino sock base. You get, I think, 400 yards per 100 grams. So, um, yeah. Just let me know 
what your favorite fall beverage is and you can have this little little bad boy sent on to you if you are selected as a winner but that is it for my making this week i hope y'all enjoyed this episode if you did uh please like and subscribe and hopefully i will see you next week with some new finishes but thank y'all so much for watching and bye Thank you.